Okay, welcome to the, today's webinar titled Putting Identity at the Center with the Federated Identity Service. My name is Laura, I'm with Radiant Logic, and I'll be your moderator for today's presentation. Let's get started. I'd like to remind you that everyone's lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the GoToWebinar window, and our presenters will address it at the end of the webinar, if time allowed. If we're not able to get to your question during the live webcast, we will email you a response directly after. This webcast is being recorded, and a link to the recording, along with a copy of the presentation slides, will be emailed out to you within the next 24 hours. So in today's webinar, we'll be discussing an unlikely pair, data management and identity and access management. We want to show that federation and virtualization, which are everyday happenings here at Radiant, are patterns that extend beyond just identity management. To do this, we've invited Mike Galtieri, a specialist from Forrester Research, who will share with us what he's seen in the data management sector in terms of federation and virtualization. And next, Wade Ellery from Radiant Logic will show how these two things are gaining momentum, not just in data management, but in identity management, and how they materialize in the form of a federated identity service. Placing identity at the center and allowing you to provide new services and renew your existing infrastructure. So first, I'd like to introduce Mike. He's a principal analyst serving application development and delivery professionals at Forrester. Mike has more than 25 years of experience in the industry helping firms design and develop mission-critical applications. His key technology and platform coverage areas are big data storage, heavy advanced analytics, machine learning, data science practices, predictive app design, and emerging technologies that make software faster and smarter. So without further ado, Mike, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Just give me a minute to show my screen. Uh, Mike Walter, Principal Analyst with Forrester, and uh, I cover big data, data management. And what I'd like to talk to you today is about some of the key trends that we're seeing uh, that leads to a concept we're calling identity plus plus. Um, first data point here is we surveyed about 2,000 IT executives and technology decision makers and asked them to rank. So as this survey data shows, um, data-related projects have risen to the top in terms of importance and investment in firm. And you can see there's other things there too, mobile, social, systems of record, engagement, that also make an appearance on this list. But it's very interesting that data-related projects rise to the top. And of course, data runs through all of these other things, but this is the hot topic now is data. And the reason for that is uh, the demand uh, for analytics and the demand to use data um, uh, to improve business operations and especially customer experience. And another data point shows this as well, that we asked what are the following initiatives of global business leaders. Of course, they want to grow revenue, which is nice. Um, but the number two, uh, by a wide margin, is to improve the experience of customers. And the key to that, um, is identity and data. Now, way back in the olden days, uh, relationships with uh, customers were very personal. You'd walk into a store, they knew you, they knew what you bought before, they knew what you, why you were likely there, and then we went to mass production, uh, where it was more of a one-to-many, and then we went to CRM, Customer Relationship Management Systems. But now, with, hold on, you probably can't see the side of that, there you go. Um, now, with big data, uh, we have the ability to learn much more information about our customers. And this is a trend that at Forrester we call age of the customer, and I just net it out, and I say it's royalty. And that is consumers want to be treated like royalty. And how do you treat people like royalty? Well, you don't treat them like they're one of the masses. Uh, when you go into any restaurant now, you get a menu, the same menu that everyone else gets. Um, because they have no way of knowing what your likes or dislikes are. And all of the brands, all of the top brands, e-commerce companies, uh, big box retailers, they're all trying to get a more personalized relationship uh, with their customers, no matter who they are. And every customer has uh, different needs, different desires, and to the extent that these customers, uh, these companies can know about their customers, they can deliver a more personalized, a more royal experience, if you will. So imagine what one of those experiences might look like. 
Uh, Melissa here is out on her morning run. She has a fitness band. That fitness band records her run. And then later that evening, she walks into the Cheesecake Factory. They hand her a tablet menu, which, has a customi which is customized to what she likes and perhaps what she ordered before. But it also links into um, the Fuel Bands API, downloads her run data for that day, realizes that she burned an extra 385 calories, and displays the Kahlua cheesecake as a potential dessert item. So that's the type of experience that we can get, but only if we know we can identify who this person is, and we can identify all of the other contextual and behavioral data around her. And so the net of this trend uh, that we call royalty, the age of the customer, is to treat consumers like royalty. In return, they'll get their loyalty. So to illustrate this point, I want to give you a rhetorical quiz here. How well do you know this consumer? Male, 35 single, resides in New York City, makes 100K a year. So what do you predict he'd do if the bank actually accidentally transferred 5,000 to the bank account? Give the money back or take the money and run. Now, you could give me both answers, and you could probably justify them. You might say, well, he's He's going to give the money back because he's going to get caught. Uh, you might say he's going to take the money and run because he has a gambling debt. Uh, but no matter what answer you give me, you're going to have to fill in details about the identity of this person that you don't know. Um, and that's what humans do. We fill in the blanks. But the reality is you really don't know because you don't have enough information. Now I'm going to give you a little more information with the, with the click of the slide. And then I want you to tell me. Um, what you think this customer will do. All right, that's George Costanza. So of any of you who know Seinfeld, you know this character so well that without question, 100% probability, George Costanza is going to take that money and run. So that's what we're trying to do with identity and customer data management is to try to understand uh, these customers more so we can give them more personalized experience. And it all starts with their identity. Now. One of the reasons we're even talking about this while we're in this age of the customer is because of big data. And big data simply means all of your data. So every shred of data that you have about this customer, the contextual data, the historical data, the identity data, and there's a lot of it. It's gushing from many sources. There's structured text from uh, you know, your traditional uh, databases and application systems. There's a lot of unstructured text from tweets, preform documents, emails, and there's, there's also increasingly binary information uh, that you might have about these uh, customers as well. So there's plenty of sources, and it's because of that increase in those sources that we're even able to think about the possibility of, of creating more personalized experiences. Now, the problem is, what percentage of enterprises data do you think firms use for analytics? We did a survey, and the respondent said 12%. So they're barely using any of their data um, in the first place. And a lot of that is because of uh, data silos. You've got identity data in your directory service. You've got uh, customer data in the CRM service. You've got other customer data in marketing systems. It's all over the place. So what we need to get to is a multi dimensional view of the customer. We need to know everything. And some, sometimes that data is messy, but we certainly need to know their identity. And their identity is expanded beyond um, just the simple facts, uh, like the ones I gave you on the quiz. Um, but we need to know social data, clickstream, all the interactions with the company. And we also need to predict other aspects of that, that customer. So when you think about identity, Identity really is at the center, because that's where it all begins with the customer. But you have to have an expanded view of what identity means. It means all of these attributes, the contact, the context, the devices they use, the likes, the usage, all of these elements of it. And that's what we call identity plus plus. And identity plus plus just means that applications, digital channels and applications for customers, have to be hyper-personalized. Uh, to, in the age of the customer to get that one-on-one -on -one experience at scale. And once you have all, all of that information, it uniquely enables three new tiers of application functionality, content enrichment, context enrichment, like the example I gave uh, with Melissa. She's, she's in the restaurant. It's right there in an hour. 
and then ultimately predicting what the customer wants. So once you have all of this data, that's what gives you the potential to actually uh, provide these type of new experiences that other companies uh, are only starting to provide. So for example, geolocation data. I mean, what if you knew that customer was entering uh, the parking lot of the uh, Rentham outlet malls? And uh, furthermore, you had weather data to know that it was a sunny day. What sort of offers would you make them um, based upon where they shop before, what they like, and maybe even based upon the weather? Right, so in an instant to do this, you have to identify these customers in an instant, bring all that, that data together to be able to make those decisions. Um, think of uh, Spotify or Pandora for that matter. You have accelerometer data in the mobile phone and that detects the motion of the phone. Imagine Melissa is on her run and it's streaming in that accelerometer data. Uh, so you identify Melissa and you know that she's running because you have algorithms that identify the accelerometer data and there's a certain tempo. And then it can play songs that match the tempo of her run. Again, that is a very personalized experience. Um, there's other applications for sensors in context. Uh, some uh, law enforcement agencies are using sensors that can detect when a gun is unholstered by law enforcement and the direction it's pointed in. Uh, that is in incredible information that can be used to improve safety uh, and response. Um, and a lot of, another example is a lot of companies are concerned about churn, what customers are going to leave uh, and go to a competitor. And again, you need the information about their usage to be able to predict churn so that you can then uh, do something about it. Now, imagine how you could bring this all together in an application. So imagine you bought a house that was 60 years old, you bought a new refrigerator, and you want to install it with the ice maker uh, and the water maker. So you decide to do it yourself because the plumber's going to charge too much. Well, your first trip to Home Depot is to buy the ice maker kit. The second, you realize you have to go back there because you forgot the shutoff valve. Third trip, you need a T connector to tap the cold water supply, and you need a hacksaw then to put it all together. And finally, you needed a drill bit. Now, that's a lot of information that ultimately could be used by Home Depot uh, to provide a much more personalized experience. So imagine if at checkout this customer was identified and all of the context of that customer, prior tools that she owns, and what if you could predict using the information what project she's working on, on that screen you could suggest other tools that she might need so she doesn't have to make those five trips. You can imagine the reports that uh, Home Depot executives get now. They say, oh, our customers love us. They visit us uh, five times in the same day. Um, but certainly, uh, if this customer could avoid those trips, it would be a boon and it would be a very personalized experience. So when you think about the design principles needed for Identity++ apps, you have to use all of your data about that customer. And it has to all be together at the exact moment that you need it to learn who the customer really is. You have to know their context. What are they doing this moment? And you must have complete and instant access to that customer data so that you can personalize that experience. And you have to adapt the functionality and the content of your app to match what they're doing in the moment. And of course, optimize it for the devices. So this can only be done if you have um, that instant access to the data. And usually, um, identity, and customer data is very, very separate. And what we're proposing is that they should be together. Um, and that's why we call it Identity++. So there's some requirements uh, to actually make this happen. Um, and it's not that easy. So the first requirement is all of these silos have to disappear uh, because you need instant and complete access to all that customer data. And you can't do it. Uh, in a low latency fashion if it's all over the place. I mean, when, you, when, you, when someone signs in or someone's identified, we know how instantaneous that has to happen, right? Or it's gonna degrade the experience. But then when you add uh, all of these personalized data, it can be a real, real challenge. So you have to have a, a platform that either makes those silos disappear uh, or appear to disappear through some sort of federation. Uh, the second thing you need is that the data quality 
has to be there because you're making contextual decisions based upon what you think this customer is doing. So when you're pulling data from many different sources, um, sometimes the quality can get messy with dupes. Uh, so that you have to have that quality. And you have to have a federated identity and customer data management must converge. So, so identity and customer data management can't be siloed. They can't be sep separated in order to uh, build this new class of identity plus plus apps. Um, and it has to be absolutely secure. Um, we know this uh, for credentials. Um, we know this um, uh, for customer data management. But what is the most uh, secure? Uh, it's generally um, identity infrastructure. And that's a great place uh, for all this personal information to be as well. Um, the, that data management has to be accessible seamlessly across multiple devices, because we know that you know people uh, use multiple screens to sequentially accomplish a task. So you have to have APIs uh, for the application developers to use to access all of this identity plus plus information. Um, it absolutely has to be fast. Um, and that is a little more challenging than it sounds. I mean, it always has to be fast. But when you're talking about really com potentially complex hierarchical data um, about a customer and their context, um, that can be a real challenge to bring all of that data together in the moment it's needed. Um, when you're building these customer experiences, um, it has to be absolutely fault tolerant. That's non-negotiable. And rickety CM CRM systems or integration technology sometimes finds that a challenge. And Identity++, plus plus, um, it's got to fit seamlessly into existing architectures and standards, all different standards, um, because uh, enterprises aren't just going to rip out what they have uh, you know, to replace it with a new system. So it, it's got to fit. Now, once you're able to uh, have this converged identity and customer data management platform, that's going to bring lots of opportunities uh, to develop these type of more personalized applications. And the velocity of business, how fast it's changing, and, and the fierce fight for customers it, it basically requires this identity plus plus platform uh, to build these types of apps. So, um, you know, th our, my recommendation is to use your imagination um, and think beyond just identity. Think of identity plus plus and think of what kinds of apps could you develop if you had that complete and instant access to customer data. It opens up a, an entirely new world of uh, applications uh, that can be developed. So with that, I'll hand it over to Wade. Wade? Thank you very much. Bring here real quick and bring up my slides. There we go. Are those viewable to everyone? Yes. All right. Excellent. Well, Mike, thank you very much for, for an excellent overview on uh, the need to put the customer first and to give them a royal experience. This is actually an excellent uh, mirroring of what we're hearing from our own customers and the other companies that we're talking with currently. They are uh, challenged by a need to provide their customers with uh, the kind of experience that makes them sticky, that makes them want to keep coming back to that particular uh, business and continuing to do business with them. And there are ways to actually do this today, and that's actually probably the question that most people are asking right now. This sounds amazing. It would be a nice utopian world if we could do that, but how do you deliver Identity++ plus plus in today's market, and how do I deliver it with my existing infrastructure? What do I have to do? How big a, uh, a transition is this going to be for my environment? So what I'd like to do is, first of all, sort of give you an overview of what's happening to the whole world uh, of IT technology, identity, where that's being driven right now, and, and it gives you some context for where we're going and where the products that Radiant Logic provides can help you uh, move down that road. Initially, we had a very simple world here in the middle of this cube. Uh, everything was inside the firewall, it was inside my business, and uh, I only were worried about employees, enterprise applications, and desktop computers. At the time, we thought it was very difficult to manage, but relative to today, it, it now seems quite simple. And what's really happened, if you look on the vertical axis going up, the applications that we have to uh, respond with, as you mentioned earlier, the ability to give that user that seamless experience moving from a mobile device to a desktop device to a tablet, 
we're now having to uh, provide application support far outside of our own enterprise environment, even applications that we don't own or have control over. While at the same time, the devices themselves that our end users are interacting with us on are expanding dramatically. And again, we're losing control over those devices in the sense that people are bringing their own tablets, their own smartphones. Uh, the phablet now is, is the new trend and uh, integrating everything into one uh, piece of hardware, but again, outside of the control of the organization. And then at the same time, we're asked to support not just our, our employees and contractors, but now our reach has to expand out to customers, partners, members if we're a large organization that has membership, so that we have to be able to understand our constituency, how they're accessing our solutions, and what they need to access in order to manage that environment. And really the key to that becomes identity. It is the only area left in which you can actually put controls around, manage the experience at the ends of these, this cube here, and really deal with the world we're in today. So to, to tie that back to what Mike was talking about just a few minutes ago and give you an idea of how you can deliver that today, Radiant Logic provides a federated identity service. I'm going to step through some of the requirements that Mike outlined here and show you how those are met in the Radiant Logic product and how you could even start today building this consolidated royal experience for your customers, giving them that uh, single point of connection, that aggregation of information so that you have that golden profile of your customer and then can deliver that identity plus plus experience. The first point that he made was that the silos must disappear. We must start to consolidate the information that we have on different platforms, different systems that were built as islands that actually need to be aggregated together to build that global profile, that rich image of our customers so we can start to understand them. But you can't just extract data from these systems. You also have to extract the relationships in those systems, whether it's databases with tables that are joined together to give you cascaded information, applications with their own context or directory systems, you need to be able to extract both the information and the context. And we do that with Radiant Logic as the first step in our process. And once we pull that information together, as Mike mentioned, data quality becomes unassailable. You have to make sure that the information you're going to make decisions on is actually accurate information, is the kind of information that you can trust, and that's going to give your user the experience they want. I had an experience just a couple nights ago where a credit card statement came to me with the wrong information on it. It did not reflect the payment I was made. And I was very frustrated that I had to call the credit card company and actually interact with them uh, directly to sort out something that actually was not my fault and had been a, a, an error on their data management side. So you want to make sure that the information you interact with and decisions you make are very accurate for your customer. To do that, we aggregate the information together using the identity of the user that's common across these sources of identity. Because we can transform and translate the different protocols, it doesn't matter to us if data information came from a database, a web services application interface, or a directory, or even a flat file. We can bring all that together and build this global model you see at the bottom of the slide here that allows you to start to see a 360 degree view of your customer and of your environment. Now once we've brought that together, we need to federate that identity and, and have the identity cover as much of the customer information we have as possible. So what you're doing here is you're building this union of information. You're uniting information from multiple sources so that you have this extremely rich profile now and a single view of your customer as they exist in different systems on the back end, not requiring you to disrupt those back end platforms because your investment in those is very large. You can't disrupt business. You need to be able to do this as a layer of abstraction above your operations that gives you more value without actually asking you to go back in and make massive changes on your back end. Now this also has to be delivered to the customer in as many forms and as many contexts and in the particular set of information that's pertinent or relevant to that customer at that particular time. As Mike mentioned, you may get to the point where you can recognize a customer uh, approaching your store and you want to relate to them with information that is relative to what their experience that store is going to be. If you're selling clothes, you don't want to start uh, worrying about information on their uh, menu preferences at a restaurant that might be part of their global profile. 
but you want to be able to interact with that information as you need it. So with Radian Logic, you're able to take this rich global profile, no matter how broad it may be, and create particular views of that data that's specific to the uses of that application, to the application's requirements in terms of data and information, to authenticate the user, to authorize them. But even beyond that, information specific to the uses of that context that the user's in. So each of these views, and you can create specific views for all the needs you have, tie back both the identity information for the user, but also, again, the context that user is in. So the information you're looking at, what your application is operating against, and what you're presenting to the customer is pertinent and, and accurate for them at the particular time they're accessing it. Now, the key here, though, is that Identity++ Plus Plus must fit into our existing environment. As I mentioned, you can't afford to disrupt your existing businesses. You can't rip and replace your back end and wait three years to uh, come back to the market. You have to be able to, to actually change the wheel on the car as you're driving down the freeway. And this is done by really honoring the existing constructs and standards and protocols that are in place. And Radiant Logic, I like to say, is uh, application uh, agnostic but standards-based. So we will talk to anyone's back-end platform. We'll talk to anyone's application using a standard protocol. And what you see here in this sort of pyramid is this movement up in the value of the information as you take the standard uh, key value. I have, an, I have an attribute and a value. I uh, live at this address. But then I start to build those attributes together to build an object. I have an individual that has information. I know about them. But where this becomes really powerful is when you start to say, not just what do I know about this person, but how does this person relate to other objects, other people, other products, other scenarios, other situations. How do I build that relationship about that user? And then I can actually transform that into what you would consider to be almost a sentence. John has access to this application to do this particular process. Or Susan buys uh, kale every Wednesday at Whole Foods. Whatever that context may be, you start to build a view now where you understand and you can build logic around this scenario saying, I understand the way my customer interacts, so I can then uh, build anticipation in that, I can give it information they need, I can deliver them information in the context they're operating in. Now what was key to this, and, and this is really one of the challenges in this, is now that you're looking at big data, now you're looking at all this customer information, and it sounds almost sci-fi in, in nature, how are you going to deliver this at a speed that doesn't have someone standing there for five minutes waiting while the spinning wheel finally answers the question. And that really is a transformation in the way this information is managed. Historically, we've used relational databases as they are very good at writing information into quickly. You can store a lot of information. You can build relationships. Not really good at giving you that relationship information back in a query, but a great place to write and store data. But where the market is moving, where big data is heading, where we've seen Google go, and, and we're really looking at the, the future, and this is what Radian Logic is, is built on, is the idea to use graph and hierarchies. And this is a rather technical terms, but basically letting you know that we're going to interact with your information in a much more relationship-based manner. So when we're doing a query or a search or we're building a customer profile, we can do that with amazing speed and at very large scale. So you're actually able now to handle the large number of attributes that may be necessary to make a decision about what you show your customer and what you give them in terms of information. So this builds for you this capability or this platform that can scale up and scale out as you start to incorporate more and more information into that profile of your user, but also more and more relationships. Uh, a typical model is, is one within the medical industry of a doctor and a patient. But the relationship is not simply doctor-patient. It's doctor-patient and possibly a drug that was prescribed for the patient and then the pharmacy that filled the, the prescription and the insurance company that paid that uh, for, for that particular uh, drug. That's a, a relationship that strings out across many entities. But if you turn the table around and say, well, let me look at it from the pharmacy's perspective, then the pharmacy looks and sees what drugs it's dispensing. It looks to see what users it's giving them to and then what doctors prescribe those. It's the same information, but it's looking at that context in a different way. To be able to move that data around and re-examine it is key, and that requires the Radiant Logic graphic hierarchical model 
the speed that we can deliver for you to actually see and manage that information. We'll look a little bit later at how we actually show context to see the end result of that, uh, that power. Now this is probably one of the, uh, this, the large concerns for most organizations when they start working with customer information because this is their biggest exposure. As Mike pointed out, both identity and personal information must be secure. Uh, you can remember probably a half dozen incidents uh, just in the last year where major organizations have, have exposed or lost control of customer data. Now this, is, this diagram here is a logical flow of the way the Radiant Logic product works in terms of attaching to the, app, the sources of identity on the left-hand side, performing the aggregation correlation that we mentioned, applying groups and roles and context to that information, giving it more value and then publishing it to the applications in uh, the format and the protocol and the standard that they need it in the filtered view that they need. But at the same time, what this model does is it gives you a massive firewall of protection and a layer of abstraction between your applications and the outside world and your back-end identity stores and identity sources. If you've got an application that doesn't need to see certain information about the user profile, doesn't need to see any credit card information, doesn't need to see any home address information. That could be completely filtered and blocked and the application will never know that information even exists or be able to uh, call for it. So if something is compromised on the front end, you're going to have a very limited view of the back end, not a direct connection back to those back end sources. So you're building yourself not only a model to manage this information, but you're building yourself a model to secure this information. So you now have a level and layer of security that's really missing from the big data world right now. You're applying this uh, abstract layer to secure everything from end to end. And we're even adding the capability now of even encrypting everything at rest so the data is completely obscured from any outside tampering or access. Now this all has to be delivered in a fault tolerant model and this is really where our move towards what we call HDAP, which is highly available. Uh, directory access protocol is based on the big data model of Lucene and, and Hadoop and the Apache uh, big data project. This allows you to build a highly scalable, highly elastic infrastructure for supporting and uh, replicating the data across many nodes of your environment. So just as the, the large organizations that do um, massive amounts of customer transactions or uh, highly available systems for managing uh, very complex business systems will use a distributed model with a lot of parallel uh, processing information. We built and deliver that infrastructure now so you have a tremendous amount of fault tolerance and the ability to distribute load both laterally and vertically within the infrastructure. So again, the key becomes here is that it is scalable and ready and available, not just to deliver the functionality, but also to deliver the, the back end infrastructure that's going to be necessary to support a customer facing application. Again, the key here is that you do not want the customer's experience to suffer in any way. You want them to get the information they want exactly as they want it, exactly when it needs to be delivered to them, without them anticipating or feeling that they're actually waiting for something or they're getting uh, incomplete information they can't trust. Now to give you a sort of a, an overview of what you can do with this uh, solution once you've built this uh, back-end global profile. And I want to make sort of a, a point here that this is not a, a scenario in which you must do this all at once. You must actually sit down in, on, in one meeting and design the final solution that you're going to deploy and then live with that decision for years. This is an extremely flexible platform. It's very easy to integrate into the back-end solutions. It's non-disruptive. And Radiologic's Federated Identity Service lets you start with whatever is the easiest piece to do, combining profile information from your current directory with additional database information and enriching your profile of your user in that step to support a particular application. And then expand that profile incrementally as you add more sources of identity, as you build more views of that information, as you express more of the context of that relationship so that the application starts to increase the functionality and the features. And what we see traditionally in our customers is that once, once the word gets out inside the organization that this capability is available, you will quickly find um, business owners and application owners and people, especially on the customer-facing side, 
who have for a long time been frustrated with their, gee, I wish the world worked differently. I wish this was easier to do. And they will come to you with their requirements, with their applications, with what they need to be able to deliver to, the, to their customers a wish list that now you're actually able to seriously look at fulfilling. And fulfilling in a reasonable amount of time. This is an application and a system that is very scalable, but also very flexible and very straightforward to implement. So you're not taking on a tremendous amount of re-architecture and rebuilding of your applications. Again, we're standards-based and platform agnostic. So we're going to talk to and interact with everybody in the standard protocols that they talk about today. So just to give you another, again, as I mentioned earlier, a, a view of how this information can potentially be used, this is a, a screenshot here, and it may be a little small on the screen here in terms of some of the information of what we call Context Builder. The Context Builder lets you create relationships between information you have based on attributes that are uh, in that profile of that user. So I can now start to very easily tie together things like my company organization with my sales representatives. But then for my sales representatives, I can actually look and see what companies or what customers do those sales representatives work with, and then even drill down farther. So here I have the first layer of the onion where I'm looking at Nancy, and Nancy is one of my sales representatives that happens to uh, have the account of the great outdoors. So in this system, I can see that relationship now very visually and graphically, and I've actually searched on this using a simple sentence. Um, the, the sales representative, Nancy, has account the great outdoors. And as I mentioned earlier, you can build this context in a sen set of simple English sentences so that a non-programmer, non-IT person can actually easily make requests. I find myself on Google probably on a daily basis typing in a near English sentence to find out the answer to a question because I know the key words in that sentence without the ands and the ifs will help that search engine find the most relevant context, the most relevant information for me. And that's the same thing we're doing here. We're letting you put keywords into a sentence context, easily find information. Now, in addition to what I know about uh, Nancy, and I also know that I can drill down one more layer and say, well, what does the account eight great outdoors purchase? And they, they purchased uh, recently order 21. So that information is not necessarily existing in the back end systems in one relationship or in one database or one set of tables. This is information that's been aggregated to build this global profile. And then I can drill down through Order 21 and actually see, well, what products are associated with Order 21? In this point, it happens to be a Calisto, the backpack. This could also be, as I mentioned earlier, the medical example of a hospital with doctors, doctors with patients, patients with prescriptions, prescriptions with pharmacies, pharmacies with insurance companies. All that can be drilled down on in one direction. But then it can be flipped in the same context, and I can say, OK, from this uh, pharmacy, let me look at all the doctors I deal with. Let me look at the hospitals they're associated with. Let me look at the insurance companies that pay through those hospitals. So I can build this relationship as I need to. Um, any way I need to display the information, but again, allowing it to be able to be accessed now in what we see is a very straightforward, a very simple manner uh, for the business person to make these requests and make these questions. So this kind of gives you a, a somewhat futuristic but also available today view of what you can do with this identity plus plus infrastructure and how with Radian Logic you're able to meet those requirements that Mike outlined, able to start delivering today a system that provides that beginning of a 365 degree view of your customer, allows you to take that big data information that you've been aggregating and bringing together over a long period of time and start to finally put value around that and deliver back not only the analytics that your business and, and management would love to have about that information, but also start to leverage that information now in how you interact with your customers, how you move forward in, in increasing revenue and in managing the user's environment. So I've come. Excellent. All right. Well, um, great. Thanks so much, Mike, for presenting with us. And thank you, Wade. Looks like we're getting close to the top of the hour. I want to remind everyone that the webcast is being recorded, and it will be emailed out to you with the presentation slide shortly. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.